the meeting to order at 7.04. And Pat, will you do the roll call, please? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please uh, respond in the affirmative when you hear your name. Victoria Knapp is absent. Amy Lyford. Present. Billy Malone. Present. Nick Arnson. Present. Dorothy Wong. Here. Hi, here. <laughs> OK. Hannah Petrie. Present. Here. Chris O'Malley. Here. OK. Veronica Jones. Here. D uh, Dale Aranda. Daryl. Daryl is here. <laughs> and Pat Sutherland is here. Alan Peck. Not here. Oh. Doug Cauliflower. I'm here. Dan Harlow. Here. Diane Markison. Here. And Sylvia Vega. Here. Thank you. And we have a quorum. Great. Okay. Um, I sent out the meeting agenda. My apologies for it being delayed. There were some things we were waiting for. Um, the, uh, the April 6th, 2021 agenda that I sent out. Are there any changes that anybody had? I didn't hear from anybody, but just wanted to ask. Okay. Pat, do you mind moving to approve it as distributed? I move that we um, approve the agenda as distributed. Second. Okay. second. Who said second? Who's seconding, just so we know? Sylvia, okay. Sylvia, yeah. Sylvia seconded. Um, okay, all those in favor of approving the agenda as distributed, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Okay, we'll move forward with this agenda. Um, Pat's on the mini meeting minutes uh, for March 2nd, and I'm assuming you made any changes or did you get any feedback from anybody? No, I sent them uh, minutes out on Saturday and I have not uh, received any um, omissions or corrections. Are there any that uh, anyone would like to share this evening? Okay. In that case, I move that we um, approve the minutes as presented. Second. Daryl, Daryl is seconding. Okay. All those in favor of approving the uh, meeting minutes for March um, as distributed, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, great. Moving right along. Um, I do not have um, really a chairman report to this, this month. Um, We've been working on a couple of things here and uh, I did want people to know, well, from, uh, I don't know how many folks drive on Washington Boulevard, but um, the somebody that I've been trying to find out who has the road um, dug up at Washington and Alstia Drive, we had gotten a complaint from somebody that rides bikes around the area that that corner was, that the street on that corner was dangerously bumpy and sort of torn up. Not this before all of this. So now what I'm trying to find out, and they told me they would fix it, but now, I mean, they, uh, Department of Public Works said they would fix it, but now um, I, I don't, I just wanted everybody to know that I'm still, I'm gonna see what they're doing, who's doing it, and if Public Works has some sort of plan to go back through. I don't know how much of the holes they're going to fill and whether it takes care of the other problem, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, I'm not sure they knew it was going to be torn up. So if anybody hears anything about that torn up corner, that's what's going on with that. Um, that's really all I have. I hope everybody's um, keeping in touch with what's going on with uh, COVID vaccines and we'll get yours as soon as possible. Okay. Um, we have one action item and Daniel, I'll turn it over to you for that. Your people are here. Yes, I see Charles here and I think uh, Noah and Didi are here too. Um, so um, we have one item, which is the 1832 Sonoma. I'm not gonna read the project number right this minute because we'll 
have plenty of that, I'm sure, in a bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, this one's a bit unusual because this actually is um, uh, directly next door to or behind my parents' house. So I will not be voting on this tonight. I'll be abstaining to it. But basically, they are um, building an ADU, and they are looking for a minor CUP on the side setback. So I pre-sent out the PDF um, for all the uh, information, the pictures, and whatnot. Um, I'm going to ask Charles here to walk you through it. I'm going to share my screen in just a second. And then Doug will follow up with the uh, feedback and information from the neighbors after that. And then, of course, we'll do uh, whatever questions the committee has. So, Charles, are you unmuted there? Can we? I am. Sure? Perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go here and sh share my screen. I have all the documents you provided, so um, I'll move through them at, at your direction, basically. Oh, great! Because I so, didn't know how to do that. <laughs> oh, except I need to be able to share my screen. It says I'm disabled right now. So. Okay. I, I um, do want. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, so could, is it, Diane, do you have control to make me presenter or do we have to have Pasadena Media do that? No, I think Chris. Oh, there we go. They got it. Okay, go ahead, Charles. <laughs> um, good evening, everybody. Um, I want to also um, bring uh, your attention to Ron Servin, who is our uh, uh, project arborist, and he has joined us if you have any questions concerning the oak trees that are on the property. Um, this is a project uh, for the Dirks uh, to create basically a family compound. Um, Didi and Paul are in the main residence now. There's a detached garage. Um, they would like to uh, have their daughter and son-in-law move into the main house and they would then occupy this ADU, creating a true family compound on this property. Um, the property has two large oaks that cover the entire rear portion of the property. Um, the existing garage uh, um, is about a, a foot three inches away from the property line. And we are requesting that we continue that setback uh, on the east side um, to, to the rear setback that we're going. On the, on the plan that you see on the screen right now, the uh, survey, um, there, I did note on there that we wanted to remove the concrete pad that's there. Um, I am now thinking that we will leave that in place so that there's no disruption to the root system of the adjacent oak that's there. Um, my plan is, is to, if you look at the cross section uh, that I provided, um, uh, it is, um, I want to basically bridge over the entire root system of the oak tree um, and uh, just have basically four pad footings to support the main portion of this building. Another two would uh, support the bathroom uh, appendage. Um, uh, I believe that this is, we could do this successfully. Uh, there's enough clearance and uh, that's my intent at this point. Um, we, uh, we do, um, I'm sorry. Um, we do acknowledge that we're quite close to the side property line. There's a floor plan that's up now. Um, the existing garage is in a dash line through the kitchen area and then goes uh, vertical uh, to the north on this property. Um, we, we do acknowledge that we're close to this property line, although we don't, um, we feel that there's a precedence that's been set and um, we are willing to uh, mitigate that for our neighbors if they were requested. We did show the plan to the neighbor uh, to the east who would be most impacted by, um, and, and that's great. If you um, if you go to let's see the uh, third, let's go um, yeah right there that that photograph. Um, if it's looking east, and that neighbor has a, an accessory building there that you can see in the background. Um, they, uh, and you can also see in this picture where the chairs are set up is the existing concrete pad that's been there uh, for decades uh, that's at the rear of this garage. Um, that's where the main portion of this ADU is to be. Um, it becomes an addition to the garage and the garage would be a, a conversion. 
um, that's where this project is going to get located. So as you look at the garage in this photograph, it's to the right. I would attach there and go towards the rear property line. Um, but what I was saying was if, if the neighbor, and, and there's the rear property line, uh, the oak tree, the same concrete pad that I referred to, stretches from the garage to almost the fence line. Um, and um, again, we're willing to work with the neighbor if they have any um, concerns about our building being right there on the property line and so much of it um, that we would be more than happy to try to mitigate that with some uh, plantings in their yard um, that would help uh, kind of break up the massing of this, uh, this building, if that's what they would like. We're definitely open to doing that. That's the east side elevation. Um, it is plain and blank because uh, we're not allowed to have any openings uh, that close to the property line. Um, the chimney shown there is uh, purely decorative. We just uh, are going to have a gas appliance fireplace, a direct vent. I was just showing a chimney for uh, architectural aesthetics mainly, uh, but that would basically be a simple B vent, which is like a, a vent out of a water heater on most of our homes. Um, so, um, and then uh, lower in this drawing is the west facing um, elevation, which is uh, towards the yard. And um, you can see the sort of where the so two oak trees are in relationship to this building. Um, and then also on the, on the site plan. Um, in closing, I just want to um, just point out that this is the, the, the intent of this is again, a family compound. There's no um, desire to make this a rental. There's no desire to um, um, do more than to just have this property uh, as where the family can gather, which this is where the, the family has been raised since I think 87. If you, if you read the, um, the letter from my, uh, the Dirks, um, it really is a great uh, explanation of their intent and, and their love of the area, their love of their neighborhood and their neighbors um, and how they want to stay there and raise the next generation of their family at this home. Um, and so in closing, I, 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 if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. I don't know if maybe Ron wants to step in now, our arborist, and make a comment about the oak trees. Um, it's, uh, Ron, would you like to? Yeah. So, you know, from day one, when, when, uh, Dee, Dee had me come in, uh, she was, you know, the, the trees were the focus of her concern. Um, so she really wanted to make sure that the impact to the oak trees was, was, was virtually nothing. Um, obviously construction is going to be happening, but she's really wanting to, and ensured that there be you know, not only a protection plan in place, but also just uh, oversight during the project just to make sure things go well. Um, Didi can attest to the actual, um, how long ago they did a previous edition right adjacent to the, the same oak trees. Um, so knowing that they, they're, they've they hired the same architect, the same contract to do this work, um, I think as a testament to the quality of work that they did, not only from a standpoint of the finished product, but also protecting the trees throughout. So I think they've got a great uh, team involved and they're really dedicated to doing the right thing to preserve the trees. And the trees are in great shape. Um, trees are healthy. I um, was talking to Dee Dee about doing some, some light pruning on the tree um, in the summertime just to you know, continue the, the best architectural and structural integrity of the trees. Um, but they're, they're phenomenal trees, really an asset, and they really appreciate and value the trees as much as the property. Thank you, Ron. Um, I, I was, uh, and Ron touched on this, I, I should have mentioned that um, the Dirks had hired me and the general contractor, Phil DeVries, to do a, a good size addition on their current home. And uh, I think, uh, Dee, Dee, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was about 20 years ago. And um, Dee, Dee is here with her son-in-law, Noah, who is, uh, he and Caroline are gonna move into the main house. Um, and Dee, Dee are you are you there? Yes. Um, okay. Yes, we did the addition um, in 1999, and yeah. so we had oak tree issues at that time that got solved with our addition. And we love our oak trees. We we love our neighbors. We've hosted a neighborhood breakfast here for 
32 years, um, the Sonoma Drive 4th of July breakfast. So we love this community. We moved here as a young couple and um, raised our kids. And, and now it's our daughter and son-in-law's desire to just kind of keep us close together. So. Noah, do you, would you have anything you would like to add? Yeah, I mean, I, um, my wife and I, we also live in Altadena. We live three minutes from Sonoma Drive on Marchetta. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I love the neighborhood. I love the Dirks. And um, this kind of all started because we kind of were all looking at our futures there, you know, like plans for working and getting into retirement, you know, Caroline and I's plans for growing our family. And we we're thinking like, okay, how can we stay as tight knit and close as possible. We all hang out a lot. <laughs> We're all very close. So um, this just seemed like a really cool opportunity to, I don't know, create a little, a, a safe haven for all of us to have, to share, to uh, live and grow a life in. So yeah, yeah. grateful for all you guys, you know, being here, Stephen here and talk about all this and express your thoughts and all that. Um, I just want to mention also um, Noah's wife, our daughter, Caroline, is an interior designer, and we very much care about the aesthetics of the property so that the ADU would really tie in with the home as well um, and not look like some strange monstrosity that is just popping up there. So hoping that if the project goes as designed, it would, you know, really tie in. So Thank, thank you guys very much. Uh, Doug, you want to take it from here? Yeah, thank you. Um, as uh, our due diligence included, we distributed 11 notices to the 11 most immediate neighbors around the property. Um, the notice included a project description along with my contact information, the site plan, the survey, surveyed site plan, and then also the uh, floor plan. Um, received responses, either email or phone calls from seven of the 11 neighbors. Um, of the four I did, was not able to contact or talk with, um, 18, 17 Sonoma was, just did not respond to, to the voicemail. Uh, 18, 27 Sonoma, the phone number uh, that we found was disconnected. 18, 37 Sonoma was unable to, look. we were unable to locate a phone number. And then 1845, um, the phone number we located was a wrong number. All those houses too, as a matter of reference are on the opposite side of the street. So very little, if any, impact to the uh, uh, project. Of the seven neighbors I was able to, to talk with and or uh, communicate via email, uh, four have no concerns and uh, no opposition. I had one neighbor that ex had a question and possibly a concern. Um, I tried on two different attempts to get back in touch with them to address the concern, answer the question, um, but not able to do so. Um, the remaining two, uh, 1824 Sonoma on the west side, um, is uh, has concerns about the project, but no real opposition. Um, although she did state that if the proposed uh, addition were on the west side of the property, she would definitely have, uh, be opposed to it, okay? Um, the neighbor on the east side is, um, Charles has identified as the neighbor that's most, mostly impacted. Um, they are opposed to the project and they have submitted a public comment that I will read when you would like, Diane. And that's um, that. Okay. Does um, you can do that now. Okay. Um, okay. This is a comment received from the uh, Casillas family's uh, family. Uh, we felt it was important to share the appeal of Altadena when we were searching to purchase a home. As home buyers, we consider the neighborhood for the following criteria in order of priority. Number one, single family homes. Secondly, ample space between between neighbors to provide privacy. Uh, third, charm and uniqueness of the residences. Number four, neighborhood safety. And lastly, backdrop of the San Gabriel Mountains. Our, our family has the following concerns with the proposed ADU beginning with the main reason. The current side setback less than one and a half feet against our property uh, is between an inactive garage and the property line. 
This is a very small setback and goes against LA County regulations. The proposed ADU will create a very tight space between us and the other home. It would be encroaching beyond acceptable limits. The proposed ADU will have new gas lines, electrical circuits, and a chimney on the ADU's east side. This will substantially increase the risk of fires due to the very small side setback, again, less than one and a half feet, could easily propagate to our home. Our existing barbecue area will be directly adjacent to the proposed ADU, which is a risk factor for the proposed ADU. The very small side setback will make it extremely difficult to install a hedge that would create necessary privacy. Acceptable to us are the following, a, five, a four foot side setback on the east side of the new structure, all electric chimney, electric stove, and all electric water heater. Since we are the neighbor most impacted by this proposed ADU, our feedback is important. A decision needs to consider all facets since this will, since this will set a precedent regards Casilla's family. And that, that's the extent of our, uh, Daniel's and my due diligence and what I was able to glean from the, the neighbors that I did speak to and, and um, what have you. So I think, it, I, and, go ahead, Daniel. Oh, and, and just so the community knows, as I said, my, my parents are one, are not on Sonoma, but on Murata, which backs up to this. And so um, other than helping Doug with some of the paperwork, I've, essentially and obviously coordinating getting the stuff out to you guys i i haven't been involved in discussing this with any of the neighbors so so and um, can i ask a question sure at this point or is it out of order uh, well i was going to say it's question time now so yeah. <laughs> if the committee if the committee has any questions or uh or doug if you have anything to add or um, I do not have anything. Uh, no, I don't have anything to add at this point in time. Sylvia? Um, I, I missed the part of you, my internet, I think was bad. When you mentioned the distance between the proposed um, guest house or addition to the property line for the neighbors, what is the distance there, Doug? It's one, one foot three inches. That's correct, isn't it, Charles? Yes. Thank you. So the yeah, so if I understand correctly, the the house that's there today, um, it has the the whole house has a one foot three inch setback, right? And then you've got the, the no, just, you're gonna you're gonna build a, on build on what's now a blank pad, which which also is going to continue. So how many feet is that adding down the side of the property? Do you know? If you go to my site plan or my floor plan, you could see. The, is this the one you want up, Charles? Yeah, it's a total of what, 59 feet, 57 feet. And I, I think it's the garage that they're, that's there, not the main home. Is that correct? That's correct, Sylvia. Yeah, the, the existing side setback on the existing garage is 1.3 uh, inches. Um, and again, they just, the, the design continues that setback for the new construction. So today there's, no, I was asking how much you were adding to, so that's, today it's 16, is that, am I reading it right? It's like it's 18, Charles, is that correct? It, to yeah. the front we're adding 14, and then to the rear we're adding uh, closer to 22 or 21 there's not a dimension there okay so you're adding what about but you I have know. excuse me you have on the on the one it looks like from the edge of the existing structure to the back property line is 29.81 and less the side the four foot setback so you've got basically almost 25.8 correct correct yeah so is that answer my question of how much how how much more building is along the property line that well, they're adding? The, going south it's tw 25 feet and then i think charles you said going north is 14 is that right that's correct 
Yeah. Okay. It's about a total of 30 feet. It's a total of 40 feet. Uh, extra. Correct. Oh, 40 feet. 40 feet. You're correct. 40 feet. My, my mistake. Um, I have a couple of questions. If Come on. Um, I think Chris was... Chris was next, I think. I've been holding uh, up my hand for a while. I got. Yeah. Um, could you please, at the at the risk of being a little repetitive, uh, can you please go to the uh, photos that show the actual structure on the property, sure. please? Hold on one sec. I just want to make sure I understand this correctly. All right. So hold on, I put your faces right in the middle of my screen. Let me move that. All right, so that's the one and a half foot set or one foot three inch setback on that garage. You want to extend that garage all the way down till the, and then there was one picture of the uh, property line and back all the way down to there. So that entire yeah. side of the, of the lot is building now. Right. Okay. Um, so your neighbor, the one I assume that's in the house right there with the windows that we can see. No, that's their accessory building. That's their accessory building. And that, my question was going to be is, does anyone know the setback of that accessory building on the other property line? Wait, so their main, where's their main house then? It's behind the garage uh, in this view that's up right now. Yeah, uh, hold on one sec. Okay. I'll bring up uh, uh, over uh, uh, satellite view real quick. Well, so, good plan. Yeah, good. yeah, the trees good. might actually block any kind of view, but oh, yeah. give it a shot. While he's doing that, I have a second question, just really quick. Sure. Um, you seem to be taking great care with the oak trees, and that's that's great. Uh, if your plan A with the with the steel beam pads doesn't work out, what's your plan B? Uh, there, I don't see why it wouldn't work out. Uh, there is okay. no plan B. All right. If there is, let, let's put it this way: the um, our arborist has uh, recommended that if if we were to do conventional footings, which is not our intent then we would be bridging over any of the roots that might cross our foundation line. Okay. Uh -oh. All right, so what am I looking at here? So, yeah, that shows the neighbors. Okay, so this, okay, so this oak tree uh, passes you guys. Okay, so this, this is Allen right here, Sonoma right here, these face Allen, this is the neighbor on the east side, this is them. Okay. So, so, the, the so can you zoom in? Can you zoom in on the neighbor? We probably can't see their house, but can you see how far? So you can see their main house right there, and then yeah. the detached structure. Yeah, I see what's going on. And it looks like the detached structure is about the same distance. Well, as, from uh, there. Yeah, from there. Um, that's well, maybe not. Uh, looking at the uh, appendage up towards the front. Yeah. Okay. But, I see. I see what's happening. So what you're what you're saying is that. Um, it's not clear if the food, oh, Daniel, give me. drunk driving. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see that just so you can see the front of the house there. So uh, which one's the front of which this is, this is, this uh, is the how their that's house. Our, that's their house. And then that's the neighbors with the complaints. Yeah. Okay. Right. But the houses, so the okay. houses themselves, none of that's changing. It's changing at the back of the property. Is that that's right? correct. So my, my, my big question then, now that I've seen it and I sort of know what it looks like, is is there any particular reason why a four foot side setback is particularly onerous? The oak tree. And if we did go to the four foot side uh, setback, the massing would basically be the same from that adjacent property. There would be no change to the way this building would affect them as far as aesthetics, and as far as massing of our building, it's just going to be instead of one foot three, it would be four feet. So it'd be an additional, you know, three foot nine inches away. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Well, this how, however, that would, that would allow some space to, to grow shrubbery and, and screen the property, though. Mm -hmm. Well, as I mentioned before, we're, we're willing to provide plantings on the neighbor's side for them. Um, I think in a three foot or four foot area, it's pretty tough to uh, grow anything with the fence on one side of that and then a building on the other. Okay, I'm not, Amy, I'm not sure who else. I know Amy's hand's been up for a while. Yeah, I was gonna say Amy, I think, and I think Billy had a question after Amy. 
And Pat. Looks like Pat also. Okay, so Amy, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I think that the letter from the neighbors describing the fire hazard is actually a significant issue. Um, obviously those trees have been there a long time, but I think um, creating yet another structure underneath the oak tree does seem like an issue because the, you know, our, the map shows the high fire hazard zone in terms of the architectural plans. And I live in that as well. Um, I think my main two questions are, what is the distance of the ADU as planned from that rear oak tree? And two, um, how is it to be that in future, this ADU would not be rented out? Because one of the things I notice about the ADU, which is I think why the neighbors are concerned is that it's 60 feet of building is a long building in Altadena in that neighborhood. It does not seem in the character of the other ADU right next door. So to have a 60 foot wall where there used to be 20 whatever or 18, that's a big difference in terms of the environment. And it also strikes me that the, the size and the scope of that ADU, I understand what the family wants to do right now, but how is it that if this goes through in terms of the character of the neighborhood and the size of the ADU, um, that there's a guarantee that whoever owns the house in the future wouldn't either clandestinely or attempt to rent out because it it does strike me that there is a question there and maybe there's a rule well, about that but yeah, I don't so, this doesn't read to me from looking at the plans as a typical ADU the way we think of them well it looks big how do you think of them yeah well I know it's an accessory dwelling unit but to have a 60 foot wall next to a property owner on the other side seems much larger than a typical ADU. And it's because the, um, the lot size is narrow. If the building were to go the other direction, which may not be possible because of the oak tree, there would be a less um, gargantuan effect of the building on the, the neighborhood at large. It would be more interior to the lot which would strike me as a compromise that could be made to avoid the neighbors feeling like a giant building just went up next door to them. Um, one thing to just for the committee to remember the typical, the uh, mandated uh, or allowed county setback on both rear and side by default without uh, a CUP is four feet. So just so y'all. Mm -hmm. Y'all know, which is right. different than our typical CSD, which would be a 25 foot setback for a non ADU building. So right. just just a, a reminder for the and, committee. And so. the other, but I had one other question, um, which was for the uh, perhaps the arborist, is what is the distance of the ADU as planned from the tree? It looks really close, like the actual side of the building to the trunk of the tree. Yeah, Chuck, I don't have the, the plans. Uh, I think it's about two and a half feet, 30 inches. That's really close. Yes. This one looks further, but this yes, one that one looks like there's a lot more room. It, the around one it. in the front, the one in the front is really uh, continuing the existing, the existing corner of the garage is there at the corner of this building. So the, this proposed portion is not getting any closer to that tree. So, so if I, if I could just make one comment, which is that what we're, this is a great discussion. What, what we are being asked to look at is the setback, right? Um, whether or not an ADU is going to be rented out later is not part of, I mean, we're ADU rules because we have a housing shortage and, you know, down the line, that's what an ADU can be used for. So um, I think we should just assume that the ADU at some point in time may be rented out. Um, but what, what we're really concerned about is the setback. We also don't, they've got oak tree permits, I think, that they're working on for this. And we're not, 
reviewing, we don't review oak tree permits. So I just don't wanna to get too far into the weeds on it. We've been talking about this for quite some time now. So we can, we can um, either, I think I there mean, were still sure, some. For, we have. I'm sorry, Dana. Go ahead. Oh, I think there were some uh, questions from Billy still, and then okay, we can wrap it up. I, but yeah, well, I mean, and Pat and Pat had a question. Oh yeah, Pat did and, too. Sorry. Yeah. I only can see like four people, and I'm sharing yeah, can my you screen. Yeah, take down for the right so, now. Take down the yeah. Screen. So. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Can Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yes, you may. Okay. Uh, my question is, anytime you're looking for something that is in, in compliance, it's, uh, you know, that we have regulations in place. So there's one, which is the, uh, what, what is the need? And then what is the one? If it's just a one, then we got to think differently. If there's a need for the, for it to be a variance, then, then, then there is a lot more allowance, especially if it's like matching the architectural details of the neighborhood and everything else. I see the second unit on the neighbor side and from the plan view, the satellite view that you showed. Uh, so my first question is how far it looks like the neighbor's ADU or, or second unit at the back is very similar distance from the uh, property line on the other side. So is that, is that the case? Are we matching what the, the architectural integrity of the neighborhood are there second units in that area with the same distance to the wall? Because it looks like the neighbor that has the biggest grievance, that their second unit is as close to the property line on the other side as this one. Um, so I'd be interested to find out if it is matching the integrity of the neighborhood for that distance. Um, I know fire usually says uh, they need a uh, distance of three feet for fire, but I think that would come, fire would have to do that anyway. My second question is we keep talking about that 60 feet and I agree that sounds like too much of a building. If it was four feet from the property line, would that 60 feet be allowed? Yes. Uh, yes, yeah. it would. Yes. So, so if you moved it in a couple of feet, then it would, that, that 60 feet would be within compliance. Yeah. And they would not be here today if they were right. to do that. They, okay. they also, um, if they were just doing a standard, uh, ADU garage conversion, which is what most of our ADUs have been here, there would be, they would, it's based on the existing building. So, um, and so. then it, it shows currently a one and a half feet roughly, but mm -hmm. what about the eave of the roof? Is that re eave of the roof going to impact the neighbor? Are you going to have runoff from that roof at one and a half feet going into the neighbor's garden? Is, is that a consideration where the roof, the rake of the roof is going to be? We, we can mitigate that with a gutter system. I would also like to add that the maximum square footage of an ADU allowed is, uh, I believe, 1,200 square feet. And this is under 1,000 square feet. And, and, in, and then my last question is, I know uh, ADUs are, are allowed by right, right. Um, but um, being a garage conversion, um, I know with ADUs now with the new regulation, you're not required to provide additional parking. But um, but correct me uh, and inform me of this. I do believe that you still are required covered parking for the main house. Is there going to be a carport and another garage if, if this one's going to be converted? And it's, not, be? it's not my information that we're required to have covered parking. They've um, relaxed that and said yeah, it's not required. We just have to have parking. Yeah, yeah, Billy, um, because of the ADU rules, even though Altadena CSD normally requires the covered parking, the ADU rules supersede that um, in, in cases like this. Um, yeah, I know the ADU doesn't require it, but I was wondering if the main house still was still. No, not, not, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a whole thing. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I would also, I would also like to address your um, first question. Um, I believe that the setback is common to the neighborhood, although I have no proof of that, only that these detached garages were built throughout the neighborhood, and probably most of them are of similar setback to the side. It well, looked to me when you showed the satellite image that there were several properties off of Allen and other areas um, that do have very similar prop, uh, distance of property line. 
Yeah, so so I have up the picture of the uh, neighbor's uh, front from the street, and you can actually see the garage back there with the setback. Um, so like I said, I, I am very familiar with this uh, area because it's where I grew up, and there are, um, the architect, uh, Charles, is correct, there are multiple existing garages i'm not sure about adus but there are existing garages so, with this setback. is that the x second unit that we see over the fence we're looking at right now daniel the garage um, second unit yeah so yes that that is i mean literally my parents are directly behind this house along with a portion behind the applicant's house and yes that garage is the the accessory building it's uh uh, this way instead of lengthways, it's, um, I guess, uh, it's east-west instead of north-south, I guess. So. so it looks like it will match the neighbor's um, setback distance. Well, it, it appears so, or it close appears, to it. Appears it. From what we're looking at. Yeah, so, um, so what we are, I I'm not sure, well, I guess that the the list of grievances from the neighbors most affected um, is is long. Um, I, I know that um, I, I know that you said that the that the chimney was what just faux chimney. That's correct, and it's um, just a it's just a gas appliance vent. It's not a, a, a fireplace vent where there's sparks and, and right. uh, embers flying out of it. Right. It's just so, a gas appliance. It's just heat that's coming out of it. Yeah. So I guess one of the one of the things that um, that I think that we ought to um, I don't know. I'm struggling with this because the whole um, the fire concern, I'm not sure gets worse than it already is. Is does anybody else have any thoughts on that? I mean, it's not we're not venting a fireplace, right? So there are no sparks coming out of the fireplace. That's correct. And um, I'm I'm not. I heard that they have a grill that's gonna be close by, but that's their responsibility to make sure that they don't set any anything on fire with it, right? Um, and then I'm not sure, I, I don't remember what the other fire, Doug, what the other fire things were. Well, I, I, yeah, it's just a concern of, of gas appliances is their concern. They'd like everything to be electric. Um, before we get too far, Pat, did you get your question answered? Oh, well, one of them was. The other one, um, I'm. it's going to sound a little strange, but I'm looking at it, actually how big a foot is. Um, I mean, it seems like it's really narrow amount of space. And I'm speaking full uh, disclosure, uh, but my garage is at the back corner of my lot, and there is a little bit less than a foot um, between that and the wall and um, nobody could ever get in there. So I'm just wondering, you know, in the small space of a, of a little more than a foot, can, uh, you know, a child get stuck, you know, can little critters build their nests in there? Um, can you easily get in to clean? That's a long space if you can't um, move up and down it. Does that make sense, my question? Um. I understand. Is it a question or a statement? Well, it was a statement, I think, but <laughs> um, okay. because my space oh. is a little smaller, so there's no way that anybody can get through the space in, in you know, next to my own garage. Um, but um, can 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 a person get by? Or I I hate to have a child get stuck in that space. That's what I'm saying. It's very small. Yeah. So Nick, go ahead. Uh, just real quick. Um... For committee members, I'm looking on the satellite imagery. There definitely is a precedent set. I count at least five, the most prominent, um, 79, 1792, where there are large structures. That one in particular is probably even longer than 60 feet, and it's right up against the property line. 
So aesthetically and precedent, um, it's already there. And Amy, yeah, I hear what you're saying about the oak trees. I agree that's worrisome, but I will say within a one block radius, I see about a half a dozen current structures disappear under trees. So that precedent is set as well. So um, as far as I'm concerned, um, these are two things that they're asking for that already exist in their neighborhood. Yeah. And um, have we heard from Murata Place, the two, um, you know, it's a four foot setback already. So it's not like it's going to disrupt them. And there's a lot of yard in those backyards, but I'm just curious if we heard from those two residents. Which, um, yes, and and uh, the neighbors on Murata had had no problems. Okay, so we have we have a couple of options here. We can. Um, I don't know if Daniel and Doug have any conditions that you were going to recommend on this, or if you have you worked worked with the. Uh, I, I have I have nothing. It would be up to Doug. So. I'm yeah, I know, Daniel. Yeah, I get it. Um, well, the you know the the, the neighbor affected has stated their their conditions that that would be acceptable, and that's to to maintain the the ordinance as written at a four foot setback. Um, I mean, I'd I'd like to you know verify the precedents that uh, Nick uh, has seen. Um, um, aerial wise, if you will, I, I don't, you know, I mean, I know the garages, a lot of them were originally built this way, but how many, you know, 60 foot structures or ADUs out there that are, are sitting uh, 15 inches from a property line. Uh, you know, I, if, if we, if we need to verify that to set precedence, then we should do that before we vote on it. In yeah. my opinion. Because that's, that's key. I mean, my biggest concern is that if this is approved, this will set a precedent in the community, and um, and, and you know, um, yeah, that's my that's my biggest concern, and I I I I, I have great concerns about that. Yeah, and Sylvia, I'm sorry. Let's see if Sylvia, our other realtor, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say the same thing as Doug. I mean, you know, I understand that there may be a couple houses, but just because somebody met once at some point did it wrong and maybe didn't go through the right rules. And so the next person said, well, they did it. And that's why we're here. We're here because there's a rule that we have. And Doug is right. I mean, a 60 foot wall, that's yeah. massive at yeah. 15 inches. Yeah. So, so we, so let's, let's be just really clear um, that the setbacks that exist, I mean, I have a house on a property I own that was built in in the very early 30s, there weren't, there was no code then, and and that my house is, I can't squish in between the house and the fence that's next door. So, um, the, so so what's there? The the garage that's there, um, I believe, was probably you know built before there were permits, and so um, or you know code. And so that that wasn't done wrong. What we're looking at is okay. Now we Altadena agreed with the new CSD that we would agree to have houses continue on the property line um, of the. Um, the existing property and have it be a minor CUP, right, Daniel? That was the. Um... Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. That that's uh, essentially. So, but that we agreed that um, existing property line setbacks would be reduced from a major CUP to a minor CUP. Right, but is there? I thought there was a. I thought that we had. We uh, asked for that. They they were willing to reduce it. So it wasn't as onerous. Uh, yeah, but, but, uh, but, but don't but, we, in part of the, C, doesn't the CSD, or does that get negated by the, the fact that they're calling it an ADU and not just a. Yeah, the, that the ADU overrides that. So, yeah, but, but so, didn't we have, didn't we have a limit to how long, how much more we could add on to the, to the, on that um, plane? We, um, hold on, I'll have to look at the C, CSD. Okay. But, so, but again, so, that, that applies to main houses, not 
not ADU. Yeah, I know the ADU thing is, and I don't have the ADU um, rules up in front of me, but anyway, so we can um, we can vote on this tonight based on what we know, um, and we have um, we would have a vote without conditions, either approval or denial, approval without conditions or denial, um, recommending, and it's we need to make clear to all the folks that are on for the project that aren't on the town council, that it's what all we do is approve, is, is recommend, um, based on what we found out, recommend to regional planning what we suggest um, what should happen based on what we, are the due diligence that we've done. Um, they don't, we're not approved, we're not physically approving or denying a project. It doesn't, that doesn't happen here. So um, we can do that or we can, um, I don't know if the homeowner and the, the, you know, architect and everything can go back and talk to the, um, the neighbors and see if there's something that they would, that would help them feel we would certainly uh, entertain that. Um, we have talked to them. Uh, uh, Dee, Dee, if you'd like to uh, make comment. Um, I wasn't in the meeting, but I believe the plan was shown to that neighbor. And I see you, Dorothy, just wait a minute. Yeah, we, we didn't have a long discussion at the time when um, the neighbor on the east side, she had, you know, obviously ha had probably more time to think about it. She didn't, she wanted a copy of the final plan, but I think probably when Doug went out to provide the plan, you know, that's when, you know, she had some more thought about it. So, but yeah, we would certainly be happy to, um, you know, talk about it. I think because of the oak trees were rather limited. And then we have our neighbor on the west side who said that she would be opposed to us doing it on the west side. So we're, we're kind of stuck because our oak trees are. Yeah. So, um, Dorothy, Dor oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, uh, let Dorothy go first. I, I yeah, have please. one comment or one thought for the applicant okay. after Dorothy. Okay, thanks, Daniel. Go ahead, Dorothy. You're on mute. Uh, yes, thank you. So, I have uh, two questions. So, again, the house I wrote down, the house at 1824 felt most impacted, right? That's the West neighbor. Is that correct? No, it's the oh, East neighbor. East neighbor, 1840. Okay, 1840. Um, so I think, so effectively 1840 on the east side, so everything is being built on the east side, right? That's kind yeah. of the agreement there. So I would say, you know, just in terms of comparisons, uh, what what is the distance between the structures? Do you know that? right now no. no i don't yeah but it's a driveway right in between yeah it's a it's yeah it's oh, it's a driveway slash patio so area back uh in between there um where they're proposing their building and the neighbor's uh accessory building which i i don't it, i don't believe it's an adu i believe it's just a maybe a garage. workshop garage yeah. area so yeah, I, I, I agree, Daniel. I don't believe it's an ADU, but I'm not certain. Yeah. yeah I, I called it an accessory building. Yeah, it's yeah, I, I believe it's just their garage with a workshop in it. It's been a few years since I've talked to them. So yeah. So I would definitely be curious to see how you could perhaps talk uh, with the neighbor more because if this is then a sort of a linear um, expansion in the front and, and the back ish. Um, that does make it different than the other structures that may be close to the property line, um, but aren't necessarily, you know, kind of almost like perhaps a twin tower feel to it. It might not be the right word. So, but my main question is, I was talking to a neighbor and uh, with our changes in insurance, um, as it relates to building next to an oak tree, um, and uh, and the effect of, you know, obviously the leaves, since it doesn't have the canopy 
Um, and perhaps because they're cement, it doesn't, hasn't had quite the canopy around it. But there were a lot of um, new restrictions that are coming uh, to um, that separation. So I don't know, Diane, also, if that's something we take into consideration, because if it gets built through regional planning and then suddenly uh, the new insurance requirements um, related to fire and um, space between structures, I don't know if the county has caught up on the new insurance um, regular those, those are in place, Dorothy. They're new. So, this is sort of so. So, so I can speak place. that this this area is not. Cons I know why there are certain areas of Altadena that are considered high fire zone areas. This area of Altadena is not in the very yeah. high fire zone map uh, for some of those insurance uh, things. Well, yeah, it definitely has expanded. I'm not totally sure how far. Yeah. I, I looked at the maps as part of this okay. so to make sure so because I was curious about if I was going to have insurance problems or my parents were <laughs> so <laughs> so um so okay. I I so did what recently was the other what was the other comment Daniel you were going to make so um and you know and this is more for Charles and the applicant. One of the things that we heard was the gas uh, fireplace uh, or gas structure. And I, I do understand that that is uh, more like a hot water heater or uh, uh, type um, appliance. But would you be open to removing that? And or, or would that be a concession that you guys want to discuss and putting an electric fireplace in there? I know. Obviously, electric fireplaces have a different feel and whatnot, but it, it does seem like the concern that Doug read was, you know, this this vent that's essentially directly in next to the property line. So I, I don't know if you had heard that from them before and still wanted the gas or or what it or or would be willing to to look at. I, I'm I, sure we would entertain a, a, another option there. I mean, it's it's. Uh... It's so not let me, yeah, so let me, because we've now been doing this almost an hour, um, or I guess 45 minutes. So um, let me say this. We, the town council, when we go out and we do the due diligence that Doug did, where he talked to all the neighbors and was able to come back and say, these have a problem and these don't, we always give um, the the more weight to the to the neighbor who is the most impacted, right? And so hearing from the neighbor um, their concerns, some of which may or may not be able to be mitigated, is something that if you if the if the homeowner was able to work out with them some of these concerns or explain or you know come up with some mitigation things, and then we looked at the project again and didn't have the neighbor sort of so adamantly against it, then that would help us in our discussion, as you can tell, right? That that's part of the problem. Um, I think we also can, well, um, I, I guess it's up to Doug. If you want to take a vote tonight, that's fine. If you want to um, bring it well, back next month. I would think if the applicant is willing to discuss with the neighborhood and, and see if they can't reach a compromise, then I think that would be the best first step. Yeah. Um, we're certainly willing to do that. I, I just want to add, though, that if this building is actually four feet from the property line and we do not have to come to you for an, uh, any kind of recommendation or approval, again, the massing of this building from their property will be the same, the same visual effect. So. Yeah, we, yes, and, and we understand that, but I think that, you know, we, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of things in Altadena that get done um, by right or ministerial and not, you um, you know, that don't, that don't ever come before us. Okay. So, but we're absolutely willing to talk to the neighbor again. Okay. Well, I, I think that would be the, the first best step. And I understand yeah. your point, Charles. And, but there's, see if there are some ways you can soften that and screen it that would be acceptable to them and, and that you guys could live with, that both, both parties could live with. Um, certainly, um, we will we will do that if 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 that's what um, it sounds like. That's where you guys are going. That you you're going to continue this to the next meeting, and yeah, so you Doug, want us you... to make an effort to contact the neighbor and uh, have a discussion with them on mitigation for their concerns. Uh, we're absolutely willing to do that without any hesitation. 
Okay, Doug, do you want to make a motion to table this until the May meeting? I can do that. Okay. Um, in the matter of project number PRJ2021-001101, MCUP RPPL 202 uh, 1832 Sonoma Minor CUP requesting a side yard modification. I may I move that we table this issue until the next uh, land use uh, committee meeting in May. Do I have a second? A second. Nick seconded second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he was first. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. All those in favor of tabling this project to review at the May meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstain? Daniel. We have one abstention, Pat. All right. Thank you so much for your time tonight. And, Thank you. And, you know, we'll... Yeah, we'll 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 follow up with Charles you and you yeah. Dee Dee. We'll we'll talk and Doug will help shepherd that. You know. Okay. okay. Appreciate your time, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, right. yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much for attending tonight. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So we are going to move on to um, the project with the um, the existing cell that's on the top of Armin's Market. That's Brett. Thank you for being patient. No problem. I'm thank hoping you. you're still there. No, no, I am. <laughs> okay. Um, Brett, I sent out to everybody um, the documents that you sent to me. And if um, uh, I don't, I don't have them up to share, but I guess I could find them. Um, and uh, I can bring them up. Diane, I, okay, if thanks. Like. I, thanks, Daniel. I appreciate it. And I also sent them the translation the, into English that you sent me. <laughs> Okay, no problem. I sent, I sent an email back to Brett and said, uh, can you translate that, that <laughs> phone company ease into English, please? So, yeah, I sent that out to them as well. And there are a couple of questions I know, um, but uh, Daniel, do you, Brett, do you want to explain what the project is? Uh, my, certainly, I would love to. Um, I also was going to say I have um, the photo sims up and uh, the drawings, so I can share that if you'd like. Oh, okay, so so Pasadena Media, can you let Brett Kofelt, is that how you say your name, Brett? I'm sorry, Kofelt? No, you're close, it's Kofelt. But Kofelt. Um, um, see if that'll, see if you get permission. If not, I have them up right now, so. Yeah, and you already have permission, so. Yep. Okay. I mean, why don't you let Brett, why don't you let Daniel do it? Okay, no problem. So just tell me what you want to see first, I guess. Okay, <laughs> so. no, no, that's, that's perfect. That's the bird's eye view of the, the site that uh, is above uh, Armin's Market. Uh, as you know, it's on Allen Avenue and New York uh, Drive. Uh, New York is to the top and on to the right. Um, our three sectors are how I say it is alpha, beta, and gamma uh, sector. The equipment room where AT&T's equipment outdoor cabinets are is down there in the bottom left corner. Okay, uh, so that's like the overview of the site. What AT&T is proposing to modify on this existing tele telecommunication facility is basically we are swapping out on position four of every sector, a new antenna, the NNHH65B-R4, which is basically, it looks exactly like that antenna, you know, on the fourth position. Right, um, uh, Brett, let me just, let me just say to everybody that that's behind signs. Isn't that right? That nobody can see that from the street. Well, they're kind of extensions up on the side of the building. They're not a sign oh, per okay. se. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, that's right. But it's, if you can, if you look down, oh, Oh, oh. Sorry. Oh, one, one more back. Just so yeah, I, was, I was trying to show okay. see if they had a front view. But yeah, yeah. So if you look well, if you look down in the right hand corner of this, those are the businesses that are across on the east side of Allen. Hmm. Just so, so you know that Allen is down below the street and the buildings that you see from there are the east side of Allen. So this 
these what we're looking at right now are hidden behind what looks just like the regular Armin building. Just I just want everybody to, to know that this is not what you see when you drive by. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Right now, they, they are uh, surrounded by what we call FRP screen, which is fiberglass uh, uh, reinforced paneling, so uh, the, so that it can get the signal through. Okay. Um, and um, uh, you can't, they're not exposed from ground level, you, right. you can, unless you can see the back end of them if you're looking from a corner. Um, but basically, on the fourth position, we're going to just swap out that antenna, put a, a new antenna on. Uh, we are removing nine remote radio units, which are those little gray boxes, uh, basically that top one too, in the top left corner, that's uh, our 11. That one will be uh, removed and replaced with uh, new RUs, uh, 4415B25s, um, and our remote radio units, 449. Um, and that's it, that's gonna be happening up at the, the antennas at that part, just an antenna, and the boxes are just going to be removed and replaced with, with the newer model, uh, the latest and greatest. Uh, basically, the best way I could say this to explain, it's basically like going from an iPhone 4 to an iPhone 4S. You know, it really is not much difference, just a little bit faster in speed. That's all it is for the translation. Um, okay. Down in the equipment room level, we are going to be uh, swapping out our power. I don't have a picture of it. Area, unfortunately, only on the drawings. Uh, I apologize. Um, let me see here. One page. The I saw it in the drawings somewhere, but I don't remember which. Yeah, it should be on C4, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah, there we go. So this is what we're proposing. Okay, uh, C3 is the original. So if you scroll up one, you'll see what the existing is. Okay, here's the existing. Um, and if you look at the cabinets, there's only three cabinets right now. And, um, and on the wall, there's existing UMTS on an H frame. Uh, it's basically our use, uh, same thing, remote radio units. If you go to C4, we are adding a, um, we're swapping and adding a battery rack for a battery backup in case power has ever uh, gone out. So uh, E911, everything else will be sustainable. Um, and we said it, um, we're removing the Argus power plant and we're going with the NetSure. It's just a different make and model of an outdoor power unit. We'll be giving, uh, adding 12 Esher rectifiers, which are very small boxes that actually fit in the cabinet. You won't be exposed. And we will have uh, four DC converters and uh, new 185H batteries, which are five strings. And they all are inside these cabinets on the outside. In the uh, Purcell cabinet, which I believe is to the right, it's that middle box. Uh, we're just adding like a new, uh, like a switch or a, a server, uh, the BBU 6630 is pretty much the simplest form I can put it that we are adding to this site. So Brett, is anything that you're doing expected to add to the noise level or um, mm -hmm. I guess the noise level? No, not at all. Um, everything, and this, there, there is a fence around the area so you can't see the equipment yeah. in the corner. Um, it, it's not adding noise. There's no uh, generator or anything like that. It's just uh, basically a battery backup. So basically kind of like a car battery just sits in there and power goes out so it can um, bring uh, power to the antennas. Okay. And there, I guess there may be, if it's battery, then there's not even, even when the electricity goes off, there shouldn't be a lot of noise associated with it. Right? No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, Daniel, go ahead. So um, one of the questions I had, I had sent Diane beforehand, is this is this CUP to continue operation of this or just to install the antennas? Because I, we've done a couple. Matter of fact, I did the Verizon one across the street because that falls in my zone. And uh, that was uh, both uh, install and, and uh, you know, continue 
the the uh, CUP for next however many years it was, right? Right. It's the same thing. It's, it's basically the continuation of the CUP that's already at hand where the CUP was expired. Uh, so we are doing a switch out of the equipment and extending the CUP to keep it working. Okay. So I have a follow-up question then. Okay. What were the original conditions of yeah. the CUP? Because we have found, um, I don't know necessarily on this location because I don't know the original CUP, but we have found with many other cell sites, the conditions of the original CUPs were not being followed either by the building owner or the wireless company. And so when we've been looking at these, we've been looking at what those CUP conditions were, and we've been finding quite a bit an issue. I mean, we did a sprint one that they were way out of compliance on the CUP. That was for a that was for a large cell though. Is that right, Daniel? Just for my own recollection. Well, remember that was for replacement and install of a new large cell site. But even on the original cell site that was there, which was the smaller uh, palm right. tree cell site, they were not in compliance. Even Verizon across the street on that building, we found items in the CUP that they weren't in compliance with. Yeah. And so that's why. I'm kind of curious what the original ones were um, on on this location because some of the conditions were like must have regular trash, you know, plan or um, or uh, uh, certain setbacks or no no um, uh, and and I'm not saying these were on this one, Brent, but on others, you know, we have a rule about no uh, razor wire here in Altadena. And the site and the sprint site had razor wire on it. And so, um, you know, this is our, this is one of the things we look at with these when they're extensions, right? So. Mm -hmm. um, with that uh, original CUP, I, I don't have that on me. I mean, I could actually locate it and uh, bring it and send it to you guys. That's not a problem. Uh, I believe it you should have a copy or the, I thought the County of LA would have a copy. Of yeah. That. I was just going to send an email to Michelle Bush. Yeah. Because M Michelle Bush was forwarding this on. So I apologize. I, if I knew I needed that information, I would have had it ahead of time. I apologize. I literally had this question like what earlier today. Yeah, right? it, and so yeah, this it's, was, not, it's not you. It's it, us. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, and I don't think we're voting on this, but I think no, before no. we do, we yeah. need to look at that. Um, so. Yeah, Brad, I just sent an email to Michelle seeing if she can send us that tomorrow. Okay. Um, yeah, that's not a problem. I mean, I just, uh, like I said, I mean, I could go back to at and and actually get it off their server. I, I just have to go and look for it. And okay. Some, Somehow, if you could obtain it or make sure we get it before we vote on this so we can look at well, it. Well, I, so. I sort of would rather get it from Michelle because that's the that's the document that's filed, don't you think? All, yeah, all we need is really the number. It should be up on the site. So Michelle should be yeah. able to give us the okay. previous CUP. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, okay. Are there any other questions? Did I, I, didn't, I don't remember if I saw any other hands. Okay, so um, thanks, Brett. We're gonna get see if we can get that from Michelle, and then if you're um, able, we'll revisit this on May May fourth. You know, fourth. Thank you. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> yeah. May the, oh yeah. May the fourth be with you, Brett. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Um, oh, that's like a whole thing in the whole world. May the fourth. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> Brett, so, so we'll, we'll, we'll revisit this on May 4th um, with the intention of voting on it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, all right no problem. I mean, I could do that. Uh, if I was able to get it right now, or you, you guys want it from Michelle, correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we need time to, yeah, to we review need to, it. We need to be able to get it out to everybody and let them digest the information. And 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 we need also to do a little more due diligence around the area, even though we know that um, all the businesses that are there are fine. We I know that, that all the businesses are fine with it, but we need to go see if there's anybody else we need to talk to. So okay. no problem. Uh, yeah, May 4th, I'll, I'll let them know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Chewbacca. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, 
So now we're going to move on to um, Rita Naravian, yes. who is going to come and explain to us this project that, quite frankly, Rita, is a little confusing. And I saw another email today that it looks as if Stephen Marr is confused or not confused. Yeah, there's more. So this is why I just wanted to do this as a presentation. Oh, hand, oh never mind, that's me. I, sorry, when my pointer goes over the thing, it turns into a hand, like you probably all do. But I thought Hannah had her hand up. Um, the uh, so Rita, if you, I sent all the information and the description from Stephen that he sent me. Was it today? I did not. I don't think I sent the the email that you sent back to him. So if you could just sort of explain, like what you're. <laughs> What you're trying to do, what the you know, what the end result is trying to be, and then what the things are that you're working through with Stephen. It's interesting you say that because we started with one thing, and then every step we have been taking the last fifteen months, yeah, adding and changing and changing and changing and changing. So um, I can share with you share with you what our intent was from the beginning well if you could just tell us like where you guys are i guess because okay. i don't know or or well first of all first of all do you need to get sharing um if it helps approval if it helps um i would like to be able to share because i've got a lot of uh okay. screenshots and sites. okay and we're gonna we're we're gonna give this about um 20 minutes rita to, okay. to go through and, and look at. And I don't know, Pasadena Media, Chris, are you there? Can you give Rita Naravian? And I also, the homeowner has also joined us since he's got some history also. Let your oh, eyes on you. Okay. Yes. Hi, there. Um, hi, okay. So so I can, I can give you a quick synopsis of our timeline of what, why we're here. Basically, well, you're at, go ahead. Where we're at now is we're in we applied for a yard modification. Right. Because we have, um, this is a multifamily property. Um, there's three units on the property. Um, however, it's meeting with regional planning, building department, um, and then Steve, zoning, there seems to be some confusion of what's permitted, what's not permitted. Right. Um, as we're dealing with regional planning, our scope of our project was to basically legalize two, two of the units on the property. There were some additions that were done unpermitted um, and for encroaching in setbacks as well as the uh, distances between the two buildings. So that is why regional planning said before we move for forward, we need to apply for a yard modification. That is where we're at now. Right. Stephen has analyzed it. He's reviewed it. Uh, within that whole process, we've also had to apply for a oak tree permit because there's an oak tree on the adjacent property. However, the drip line is over right. one of the units. Um, so we got an oak tree report applied for that. Uh, and so we're waiting now. Um, my understanding is your uh, council needs to review, approve, so that Stephen can move forward with the yard modification. Well, let me. What the same discussion that you just heard about the house on Sonoma? Yes, is, is what we what we need to have the discussion about this property, right? Um, and you've got two distances that are not um, that are not complying right that um one is the distance from the property line the other is the distance between the two buildings correct and you've got you you i know what you're working on with steven is that you and steven is regional planning by the way um and so he's uh working on you so you're trying to also legalize a couple of the buildings on the property that oh. That was that's not our intention and it was news to me as it was news to you from his email that he sent uh, oh. yesterday mm -hmm. because 
we have building records that have permit numbers and even from some of the building descriptions, I think the building blocks, which uh, Stephen said that's not permits. However, on that building uh, records, building description blanks, are two permit numbers, one for the uh, unit A and one for unit B, dated 1947, dated 1953. Okay. 1947 even states on here, original permit is lost. Right. So you're still working that out with him, but do you, are, yes. do you have, can you see if you have sharing rights? If not, I have the PDF and can share that. Okay. okay. So if I do this, and what would you like to see? Well, so what we're going to be reviewing, we're not going to be reviewing the oak tree permits. Right. Um, we understand that the drip line, you're not supposed to build under the drip line, but you are, they already, that property already has built, correct? Under the uh, drip line. Well, the, the main house was built already under that drip line. Right. Okay. Um, so are you, are you adding square footage or? Yes. Okay. yes. So, no, can you see this? Can you see yeah. the, the uh, my site plan? Yes. So. These two structures, one was built in 90, uh, 1947, 1775, 1777 was built in 1953. The areas are what we are legalizing. We need to legalize these additions that were have already been built. Right, okay. Okay, as you can see, the, the drip line here, part of the um, addition does encroach into that drip. Um, right, but so, let me let me just let me just be clear on my own mind. Okay. None of what you're proposing to build new is under the oak tree. That is right? correct. Okay. Okay. The oak tree is on the adjacent neighbor's property. Right. But but okay. you're trying to legalize, that's what I was talking about. You have to you're trying to I'm legalize trying to... that piece which happens to be under the drip line of the oak tree. Correct. But it's not new building. No. Okay. No. no. Okay. Um, and so there's the, the additions are what we're trying to legalize. Okay. Um, we also have, have the addresses mapped by the mapping department. So now we have a unit number B and unit number A. Okay. For the past 50 years, these, these units have been called 1775 and 1777. They have their own utilities with those addresses, but yet again, no records of, of these permits. So there are tenants in these homes right now. Um, and the whole point of all this um, legalization was because the owner upgraded the, or try, is trying to upgrade the electrical meters and panels. Mm -hmm. And we cannot get that permit until these additions are legalized. And okay. so, there's, so there's, there's a flow to everything that, that we have been doing. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't think any of that is anything that's part of what we have to review, right? We're talking about the no. yard mod, the yard modification, which must be. What I'm understanding is, so yeah, yes, so it's so the yard modification for the setbacks and the distance between the two structures. Okay. For those two buildings, right? These two buildings. Correct. So. That are existing. That is correct. And, and, and so did you say you're, you're building more and that setback will be okay? I'm not building anything anymore. It's oh. already, it's already built. These additions have already been built. You're legalizing them. It's, it's When, when were those additions built? 2019. Yeah, recently. So basically, this they were built recently. The buildings themselves were there since the 40s, but the Correct. but the the additions that you're looking to legalize were illegally built in 2019. Correct. 
So those additions would have been, RCSD would have been applicable to those additions. Right, so the, so the, the distance between the, the top building and the bottom building that's so close to each other is, um, is closer than it. Um, it's four feet, two inches distance between uh, the two buildings. Okay. Yeah, and, and the part that the striped part, the diagonal striped part was the existing building, right? That, that is correct. Okay, so what you did was, or what they did was they filled in a front set. It was like a front doorway or something and they filled it in, right? Something, something. something. Well, it, it's a lot more than that because it was seven feet, 10 inches at, by 12 feet. That wasn't a front doorway. That was a, a patio. Like a, yeah, that's what I meant. Like a front yeah. patio with the door maybe where the seven- Well, ac feet. actually that's the rear of the house. The front oh. of the house is right here. Yeah, so they they filled in like a back patio yeah. or something, and and it's oh, a right. and it's a bedroom. It's a it's a bedroom, uh, two oh, story right. house. Okay. Yeah. So um, so I I I I gotta be really upfront. That both these should have been applicable yeah. to RCSD. You are basically asking for forgiveness at this point. On the back setback, you have three and a half feet. That's not even what we allow our ADUs here. Mm -hmm. On the on the lower side, you have one and one foot. So basically, you guys built this in 2019, ignored the CSDs, ignored county code, and are now here asking for us to approve something that the Altadena community has been not putting these buildings this close to the property line. And, well, and that's what you're asking for today. Dan, well, wait, 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 wait. Let me just make sure I understand that this is what I was trying to say about the diagonal lines. The diagonal lines are the part of the buildings that were built in the 30s or the 50s or whatever. 40s and right? 50s. That yeah, but correct. they're asking for the solid red portions, which were it. built in 2019, which Daniel. should have followed our CSD. Sorry, point of order. Uh, could you scroll down just a little bit so I can see the bottom of the... Of the... Yeah, Just scroll it, scroll it down. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Go. So, so that's all right. So let's just, I, I, um, yes. So yes, they built this recently. They filled it in. They're trying to get electrical panel upgrade and the, and building and safety won't let them upgrade the electrical because they have all this unpermitted building that they did. Additions. Um, I think if I'm understanding correctly. So the, right. So on the top building, the setback between the two buildings were, was, was jigga jogged, right? So the, so if you look at this bottom line, um, I don't even know how to say what that line is, but the bottom line on that building where they filled in the 54, the 94 square feet, right? right. Because that 94 square feet was jigga jogged back the set the setbacks between the buildings were well if that was a porch or something so so i just um they built along the existing lines and mm -hmm. filled in a spot i'm just i'm not i'm not but, but that's not, not what they did on the back of the structure bringing it three and a half feet to the property line the, 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 the like, bottom structure you're you're absolutely right the bottom structure the right the 85 square foot the 85 square foot addition yeah pushed, pushed that back um if i may can i can i clarify that i'm, I'm hamlet here the homeowner mm -hmm. so um in regards to the 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 upper property i didn't move any of the walls that was that was a porch there and the electrician told me that the panel has to go on that wall so all I did is enclose that wall and then realized later that, you know, I need to get this permit and, and, and add this into the square footage. That's why I've spent thousands of dollars on this. And I've got an autistic kid that lives in that property that are that I've gone through the winter without the heat and, and now they're going to go without without air. So I had to put the electric wall on that. I wasn't trying to get any square footage by, by cutting corners. Um, I enclosed that porch. I didn't move any of the existing walls of the property. 
um, I'm not living there. I didn't, I wasn't trying to glorify the property. I just had to put up a wall there so I can put the panel on it, which the panel is on that right now. And in regards to the lower property, I well, didn't also move any wait. walls there too. The back the part top, of the, the, on the yeah. top, on the top part though, you made a new bedroom, right? You enclosed it. To make I, it I had to enclose it. Yeah. The, this foundation was already there. It was the, 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 the posting was already there. All I did is close the wall so I can put the panel on it. So as you know, mine as well, I enclosed both walls. Well, I, I had, I recently had to upgrade a, a panel on a property that I own and I put it on the outside of the, the Edison let me, what told me to put it on the outside of the building. So I'm, I'm not entirely clear. I, I, um, I yeah, I, I, I'm just, you know, I was following directives with what I was allowed to do. And again, I didn't move any walls. The setback was already there. I didn't change any of the setbacks. Those property lines were already in existence. Well, there was not a solid there. There was not a solid wall. In it, there was not a solid wall that then was close to the solid wall on the bottom building. It was an open but, patio. But there was a raised yeah. There was a raised porch that yeah. Okay. Fixed. All right. So so. Can I ask the, a question on that part? Sure. Mm -hmm. That the the one we're looking at the top building is a two story building. That it is. particular 90 square feet you're talking about, is that both levels? No, Was just, it just the first, the just the first level floor. Or? No, just the so, first level. So I didn't touch the second floor. The upper floor actually came to that property line there that you see. No, the, sec no, the, the second floor is not on top of that part. The second floor is on the so upper corner. So, so that 94 square feet doesn't have a second story? No. Okay. So then the bottom building, the real concern is that you push back the building five feet toward the property line, right? Okay, yeah, and I and, and that was already a storage that was enclosed. Um, all I did is take down the wall that was connecting the in, in the living room into the out, out, out storage. So that, I, again, I didn't mess with the walls there. The walls were already in existence. It was okay. a storage going on the property line. Okay, and, the, and, the and I think there's even a permit for that storage. <laughs> yes, and there is a permit for that storage too. Yep. So then, what what is Stephen saying that we need to do for the yard mod? Which pieces? I'm not sure where he came up with that, and I don't know why he's saying that either one of those buildings have permits because that was never the case. Okay, so here's what I propose that we that we do, Rita. I think we go back to Stephen and make sure. I think what he's saying is that because those are non-compliant, um, he's saying there are no permits, right? I'm just telling, like, let's just talk about what he says, right? That, that's what he's saying, yes. Right, so he's saying that they need to be um, permitted and, and then once they're permitted, then we can, um, no, we do not. Um, the, I think you can see that, Nick. Um, the, uh, the pink parts are the new parts that were built in 2019. Right. Anything, that's, anything that's striped was built before 2019. So right. I think we just need to go back and have you work out with Stephen exactly what it is he's get, because like you said, things have changed since this since we first had the discussion, right? And so um, we just need to let him have a minute to um, uh, to get um, to get you guys, the two of you, to get on the same page. If I'm not like I said. I'm not sure because I've submitted everything to him. All these uh, building records that show. Well, I can that I can try to talk to him tomorrow again if that's yeah. if that if that will help. If you think that will help. Yeah, sure, it will help. But, you know, Here, here's the situation. If you're saying 94 square feet addition, the 104 square feet addition, and the 85 square foot addition were built in 2019, all three of those would have required permits. That's right. All three of those would have required a minor CUP for a yard mod because it doesn't matter that they were a patio before. You are converting the patio to an enclosed living area. You're converting the storage space to an enclosed living area. All of those are in violation of our CSD. They are too close to each other. They are too close to the property line. 
They're one foot to the property line. We spend an hour talking about 15 right. inches. Right. This is even closer. Right. And so here it's like we didn't vote on the one earlier. And here, this is even closer than that. Yeah. That one at least was four feet back and 15 inches. And so that's why you're here is if those were built in 2019 without a permit, which is what you're saying, right? and that's why you're here to legalize them, those require a minor CUP. The existing structures, if they were built in 1947 and 53 or, a, or those, that was before any CSD and those right. setbacks would have been allowed at the time, like right. we were discussing earlier. Right. And so here you're basically asking us to approve these illegally built additions because you're shaking your head that they're not illegally, but you said they weren't built with a, a permit, without a permit. So that's why I don't understand. They were either permitted in 2019 or not. Well, we're and saying so, they're not, they weren't permitted. We're here to legalize them. Right. We're here to get the, hopefully get the yard modification and, and, and move on with the building department. Right. And so here's what I think that we need to do um, is that I will go talk with Stephen Morgan um, and make sure that I'm I'm clear. The um, the one thing that is. Um, so in my mind, the the 94 square foot addition. Um, made that building too close to the other building because it overlaps now, right? The the original building that's the, the diagonal lines stopped mm -hmm. and there was a little patio there, but it wasn't um it wasn't like a full on piece of building. I don't I don't know if they count patios as part of that setback. Um, but what the other thing to remember too um, Hamlet is that once you change the footprint of a building, you have to go by the new code. So uh, stuff that's grandfathered in because it was built in 1937. Um, once you go to, to change that, what was there in 1937 now requires that you're in, in up to code with the new code. So the, the um, 50, the 104 square foot addition is an ex is 13 feet as opposed to 60 feet that we were looking at before, but 13 feet of extending an existing plane of the side of the, I'm talking about from the, um, just the, the 104 square foot addition, right? That was filling in some front patio too, it looks like. And so, or something. And so that made the, you know, the building be along that Southern or whatever the um, the bottom wall be the same. What's extremely concerning is the 85 square, square foot addition. Um, did you did you say Rita that that storage part was permitted? I have some documentation that shows that there was a drawing that was storage and, and uh, okay. my planner oh, even- oh, oh, planner Hold on, was, it, was it permitted or not? Because that's what we asked. I don't care if there was a drawing. Was there a permit right. for oh, that? I, I didn't say I didn't say drawing. I said documentation. Yeah. So there. that's. I think that's the biggest piece. Right that here. I, right here. That's, Second. Let me rotate it okay. so you can see it. That's the biggest piece that right I think. Here. here. Hang on. It takes a while to load. It takes oh, a while sorry. to load. Let me. Let uh, me I think you here. only shared the one PDF, so we're not seeing your other screen. Right. There could be there could be a permit for storage versus that of occupancy. Yeah. So that's the that's the one that is personally not as chair of the committee or anything, but just personally is is very concerning to me because that pushed that building right up that did not it it had a five foot setback and now it doesn't. Well, right. kind of it, it was an enclosed storage. Right, but if it wasn't permitted, then the building technically ended where the where the diagonal lines are. It, it is permitted it, as a it's story. It's right here. Permit number one hundred eighty-two, dated two five fifty-three. Okay. Well, so here's the thing. So here's the thing. We're this is this is going to be a presentation only tonight, anyway. 
and um, you can go, I'll, I'll watch you work out with Stephen about what is, what really was permitted and not permitted. Um, Cause I know he's copying me on those emails with you guys um, and see where you come out with that. Because if it ends up that those, that that storage was permitted, um, then that changes the, the discussion. Um, and then we are going to have to look at the um, the 94 square foot addition, which then made those two buildings too close to each other, and the 104 square foot addition, which extended a non-compliant setback on the side yard, right? Yeah. So are these rentals right now? Or are these owner occupied? What What's the situation with them? They're rentals. They They were sold to me with, I guess, with um, the scattered permits that I have right now and all I wanted to do is upgrade the electricity because it was on a 110 panel and they were complaining about the heating and the AC so I, I had no intentions of I, I don't care about the 94 square foot or 105 I, I was trying to add the I was trying to give them proper heating and AC um, there's a legally blind woman that lives on a smaller unit and there's a nine-year-old autistic child with the two um, 11-year-old siblings living in the other one um, yeah that all, all, I mean, all I want to and, do and, and 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 what's the what are the surrounding property buildings? Are they R one or R two? Are they multi family units? They're, they're all, all multi units. All, they're yeah. all R two. Is, is this an R two property or an R one property? R two. Yeah, okay. there's that area, Daniel, on Oxford South of New York. Because um, we do that? have slightly Houston. different rules hang on, for R two. Hang on, hang on. Can you see this map? Uh, we're no. still only seeing the original. You only shared no. one oh. window. So, Veronica, did you have a question? Was that you? Yeah, I just want to know, can we, do we have it within our power to take something that is illegal and then make it legal? I mean, well, so that's illegal? what the CUP does. That's what the so CUP does. So how do you, do you just say, okay, they can leave it like that and well, now it becomes legal? The that's up to the county. Remember, we're just giving feedback um, mm -hmm. from the from the neighbors, um, and the county decides whether or not they're going to um, approve the the CUP, which is a you know that is a uh, or the minor CUP for a yard modification. So they come, you know, if they came and they said. Um, if they came when they were building it and said we need to get closer to the the property line, then you know we would we would look at it and say yes or no or just recommendation. But we have in Altadena loads of people who build stuff that they shouldn't be building, and then later on run into problems when they're trying to do other things, which is what or trying to sell their house, which is another whole thing. So, yeah, I just know in Pasadena, they just make you tear it down. Yeah, and that's they do that in the county, too. That's right. That's one of the options. Sylvia, didn't you have somebody have to tear something down? Yes, I had a, I had a, we had a neighbor um, on Coolidge, and he had built a complete guest house with central air conditioning and kitchen and bathroom and everything. And the neighbor complained because he had uh, done it without permits, and it was too close to the property line. And the county put a lien on the property and he couldn't sell it and he had to take it down before he sold it because the, pro the county came out and he put a lien on the property. Yeah. So, so just so people realize is on a R2 property, which I think you confirmed this was Rita. Yes. Um, yeah. So an R2 property, we default to county code on this for our traditional setbacks, mm -hmm. um, which would be a... Uh, five foot um, on the side and fit standard 15 foot on the back. Um, that's what we would, if they, if this was a totally brand new building, right. obviously we have existing buildings that were done uh, pre uh, pre um, 1980. And so those would have been uh, at the old, uh, pro, you know, three and a half, or, or no, they would have been at four feet um, setbacks on those. Right. So, so, so just because R two is different here in 
in Altadena. Right. Well, and and I think Rita, the latest thing that Stephen was saying was that they were because it's an R two that what two of the buildings were going to be okay, and then they were going to consider the third one an ADU. That's what he said, and again, yeah. that was the first time I heard of that. Yeah. So anyway, so we just yeah. like I said, this was a presentation for us to get get sure. oriented oriented with the project. We'll I'll go back and talk with Stephen Marr and Reed, I'll let you guys work out what is permitted and not permitted. Um, and then we can uh, we can come back together when we're ready. Just could I just make one more point though? Uh -huh. Because could you mentioned uh, neighbors. You or Daniel mentioned neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, I'm showing um, a, a, a Google Earth site. Can you see this? Yeah, it would be good if it was a little bit bigger, but okay. So okay. neighboring property right at the property line. The other yeah. neighbor, the other neighboring property also right on the property yeah, welcome, line. Welcome welcome to Altadena. Right. So um, <laughs> and, I don't think any I mean I know but but uh, those are that's not new building, right? Those are existing Older no, buildings. I, I don't know. These were just, I, you know, I had to do oh. a, I had to do a neighborhood survey of yeah. the yard modification to see what other properties uh, would, were falling into this, to this situation. And I had nine different properties that I could see without trees covering it that show that there were distance between the yard, the, the, the um, buildings may not comply and, and definitely the, the yeah. setbacks are right at the property line. So yeah. it's, it seems to be common for this particular area. Yeah. yeah so, so Rita, one thing to be cautious about a survey like that, um, because we have had this issues with other properties where they show us, oh, there's all these other properties. And then we go ask the county, hey, do, what's the CUP or what's the permits? Oh, and then all of a sudden we find out the five properties the the applicant showed us are all so, non-permitted right. illegal also right so um it's nice that you're showing these but i can I, I look at, yeah but looking at this one where it looks like the home is attached to the fence i'm guessing that's probably not uh permitted properly yeah, yeah. Right. so that, um, that, that was one of my requirements for the application yeah but yeah. but the but the county also looks at that because we've gotten yeah. stuff that's been kicked back and they said well this is a nice example but Thanks for yeah. pointing out an illegal, yeah. illegal property for us. So, okay. Um, so I thank you, Daniel. That's very actually good information to share because that it it gets really complicated. So Rita, we'll just we'll go back to the Sylvia and I will do some more work on our end here, and then you need to negotiate with Stephen Marr to figure out what is and isn't permitted. Thank okay. You. I only negotiate with what whatever documentation well that, you have. Yeah. yeah that's what i'm saying yeah you know he's saying no you're saying yes so go you know so, you guys so, so real quick before they go she was trying to show us something about the storage permit storage permit could you show that oh, again oh, i'm yeah i'm sorry it, it did not come through earlier yes yeah, so let me, let so. me see. hold on um where is it share 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 um Now, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, or if you can't find it, maybe it can be well, I, I again. Trying to share it. Here we go. Share, show all windows. Um, Okay, so this is the document, but you can't see it, is what you're saying. Well, no, we couldn't see it earlier because you were only sharing one screen, not everything. Can you see this now or no? Yeah. You see the Where storage? is the storage? Right here. Right here. On top. And this was attached to what? A permit? This was this, attached, attached to the permit. This was attached to this building. Interesting. That was a 1950s permit? Uh, 53. 
Hmm. Interesting. And when I look down here, you'll see. Can you see? It says yeah. Print number 182 date dollars Yeah, $1,000. Wow, so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So, right. so. Thank you. All right, so thanks very much, Rita. We'll be in touch, okay. and, and you let me know how you work with Steve. I'll talk to him as well. Okay, sounds thank you, good. Everyone. All thank right, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I have to. Uh oh, who's who's whining? Okay, um, I did not get any uh, uh, public comments from the general public. Um, for today. Um, so I, uh, are there any census tract reports? I didn't, I wasn't told of any, but okay. Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Mm -hmm. um, Daryl. Motion to adjourn, yeah. Okay. Daryl, motion, Daniel seconded and all in favor. Uh, Hi. Thank Hi. you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. It's been fun.